meeting today. We will now begin with an opening statement from Coach Smart and then go to questions. Use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. All right, Coach, please give us a brief opening statement. Uh, first of all, congratulations uh, to Abilene Christian. They played terrific, uh, made some huge plays, phenomenal on the defensive end all night long. And, uh, you know, certainly my hat's off to their whole program. Uh, you know, I just really feel for our guys right now because, uh, you know, up until tonight we had a phenomenal season. Uh, and this obviously isn't the way that any of us envisioned it ending. Um, but this is, you know, one of the facts of the NCAA tournament is one team gets to stay and one team goes home. Um, you know, I thought their aggressiveness uh, really had our guards on our heels for, for much of the night. Um, but at the end of the game, you know, Matt made a heck of a play, uh, created a great shot for Andrew. Uh, Andrew made a terrific shot, put us up one. We just needed to stop. You know, and we blocked the shot, didn't get the rebound. Uh, so again, all the credit to Abilene Christian. Thank you. We will now go to questions from the media. Use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. Our first question comes from Kevin McCaskill. Yes, this is Kevin McCaskill Jr., uh, FP Sports at Springfield, Mass. Uh, your team had 23 turnovers tonight. Was that a result of Abilene Christian defense or your team being careless with the ball? I think a lot of it was their defense. Uh, they lead the country in enforcing turnovers. They force over 20 a game. Uh, you know, we certainly could have done a much better job uh, being sound with the ball, uh, particularly our guards. Uh, between our three guards, we had 15. Uh, but they deserve a ton of credit for the way they force turnovers. Our next question comes from Brian Davis. Yes, Brian Davis, Austin American Statesman. Shaka, it was, uh, the guys looked uncharacteristically nervous uh, in, in the first four minutes. Uh, were you surprised by that? What did you say to them? And just, uh, were you just shocked at how kind of out of sorts that they looked in some of these turnovers? Yeah, I wasn't surprised, Brian, by uh, our guys being nervous early in the game. Uh, it's, you know, typical, typically the case, you know, in your first NCAA tournament game, um, you know, particularly after us really, you know, being in, in the bubble here for a week. Um, but, you know, I really felt like we would settle in. You know, we were able to start the second half well, took a lead by nine in the first minute of the second half. Um, but we weren't able to sustain it. And, yeah, I, I was uh, surprised by, you know, we – Normally, you know, we've been able to play with, with, with very good poise. Um, and, you know, tonight, again, Abilene Christian deserves a lot of credit uh, for the way they got their hands on the basketball. Um, you know, Matt, obviously it wasn't, wasn't his night, but he, he's, he's our guy that, uh, you know, we want the ball in his hands, uh, along with Courtney and Andrew. Um, you know, just one too many turnovers tonight. Next question comes from KXAN. Chris Tavares with KXAN News in Austin. Shaka, what are the emotions after a loss like? What are just what are the emotions after a loss like this? So so close, so heartbreaking, and especially with what the expectations were for y'all in this tournament. A lot of tears in the locker room right now. Uh, a lot of guys, you know, extremely upset about the way the game ended, um, the fact that, you know, uh, we have to go home now, um, you know, really disappointed. Everybody is, um, you know, just, uh, you know, I told our guys, I, I, I thought coming into this tournament, uh, the way that they handled all the things that were thrown our way all year long, um, it was just phenomenal. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff that uh, could have made people crack or quit or, or separate, and they, they really stayed together. Um, but tonight, uh, obviously, we, we, we didn't play our best. And, and again, Abilene Christian deserves a lot of credit for that, the way they defended. 
Our next question comes from John High. John? John High, Fox 7 uh, here in Austin. Coach, I, that's what I was kind of going to ask you is what you actually said to them after the game, and did any of the guys have anything to say, or was it just a bunch of crying? And do you think they overlooked uh, ACU at, at all? I know that was one of the things you stressed coming in, not to overlook any opponent. I don't think so. I don't think our guys overlooked uh, ACU. Um, I do think that, you know, we got into the game. Again, there were some nerves early. Um, you know, it felt like we were, we were settling in. But uh, then when they made a run early in the second half after we had been up nine, um, you know, we didn't respond with the, the poise that we typically need to respond with. They made some really, really tough shots. They banked in a few uh, shots late in the clock. And, you know, the best teams find a way to – get beyond that and, and, and I could kind of feel like a couple times that taking the wind out of our sails but that being said the guys kept fighting and there we are with a one point lead uh, there you know in the last possession of the game big big key to this game was they got 18 offensive rebounds including that big one late in the game uh, and you know that was a huge difference our next question comes from Nick Moyle Yeah, Nick Moyle, San Antonio Express News, Houston Chronicle. Um, yeah, Shaka, I know I'm sure you're not happy about um, the 18 offensive rebounds that Abilene came up with. Um, you know, what do you what do you attribute that to? And you know, did you consider maybe trying to play Greg a little bit more just to see if he could give you a boost on, on the boards? Or you know, what was the thought process in playing uh, Greg six minutes tonight? Uh, we were just trying to play to win. You know, same thing that we do in any game. Um, yeah, the 18 offensive rebounds was a huge, huge difference maker uh, throughout the game and obviously in that last play. Uh, if they don't get the rebound, uh, the foul doesn't get called, and we wrap up that possession, and now we probably win the game. Um, you know, I, I, I think they played with, with uh, an aggressiveness on the offensive glass that uh, we didn't do a good enough job counteracting. Uh, there were quite a few that went out of bounds off us. So even though they didn't grab the ball, they still had possession of the ball. And, you know, they made us pay on some of those, um, you know, 12 second chance points. And we did not offensive rebound well. Um, now they got way more shots than us uh, because of our turnovers and because of their offensive rebounds. Our next question comes from Cedric Golden. Yeah, Cedric Golden, Austin American Statesman. Uh, Shaka, your guys passed a lot of tests this year uh, on and off the court. Um, and you put, your, put yourself yourselves in a great position to make a deep tourney run. How disappointing after passing all those tests, you finally get where you want to go and you can't get it done? Extremely, extremely disappointing because, uh, you know, we come into the seed, we, we earn a three seed. In the NCAA tournament, you know, I told the guys the other day, like, you guys don't understand how hard that is to do, um, and we and we've we've earned that. Now, uh, we we want to make the most of it, and we weren't able to do that. Uh, again, ACU deserves a ton of credit for uh, winning the game tonight, um, but it's really disappointing, Cedric, because uh, you know I I really felt like. Uh, before this game and even during this game and at the end when we when we grab the one point lead, uh, you know, sometimes it's games like this, you just have to find a way to uh, come away with the win and then guys kind of settle in and start to find their legs more. This has been a unique um, few weeks for us. It's been a unique couple, uh, several days, I think, for everybody here. Um, and obviously we, we didn't play our best tonight, so it's it's extremely disappointing. Our next question will be from Arthur Johnson. Arthur, you're good to go ahead. All right, we'll move on then to Kirk Ray Bowles. Yeah, Shaka. Uh, you started out strong with Jericho. 
in the post like you always do at the start of a game. And I think he just took one shot in the second half. Uh, why was it so hard to get him involved, uh, integrated in the offense in the second half, do you think? Well, you know, Kirk, a few of the times he did get it, he wasn't able to get, he got fouled, um, but he wasn't able to get shots off. And um, it was tough to get it in there. You know, usually the best way to get it into him is off a of pick and roll than him running down to the rim and guys finding him. Um, you know, the shots he got were from that. Uh, but we, you know, they, they did a really good job with their hands. Uh, you know, we turned it over quite a bit in those situations where, you know, one more pass and then it goes into him. Uh, certainly was a point of emphasis, but you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, with our guards struggling the way that they were, uh, you know, we, we, we want to get it into him. Uh, I, I thought the times we did, it was good for us. Uh, he just, he didn't get a lot of shot attempts. And uh, they, they deserve a lot of credit for that, for giving him a lot of attention. Next question will be from Dustin McComas. Uh, Dustin McComas from orangeblitz.com. Shaka, it looked like in the second half you guys tried to move the ball screen around a little bit in, in different parts of the half court. Um, what were some things that you guys tried to do offensively that were different just to try to get those guards going and, and get them into better spaces on the floor? Well, I, I thought the, uh, the few times that, that we were able to attack from the middle with a little bit of movement, uh, it was good for us. Um, now, all year long, we've been really good playing on the sides and, uh, you know, kind of taking advantage of our quickness, use, using the baselines. Um, but, you know, when, when we had the ball in the middle, moved a guy, cut him through, uh, and that was able to get downhill a couple times. You know, he, a couple times he lost it. Uh, he was able to get in there and, and, and get all the way to the basket once early in the half. He found Andrew late in the game on that action. Um, you know, I'm sure when we look at the tape, that's probably something that, that we'll, we'll look back and say we wanted to do more. Um, but man, I mean, some of the things we've been so good at and, and, and even, you know, against uh, teams in the Big 12, uh, you know, we weren't as good at tonight. Unfortunately, we do not have any more time for questions. Thank you, Coach, for your time today. And we will be joined momentarily by Matt Coleman. Please use this time to raise or lower your hands as necessary. We're now joined by Matt Coleman and we'll begin the press conference. Use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. Our first question comes from Kevin McCaskill. Yes, Kevin McCaskill Jr., FP Sports, Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, two part question. Have you made a decision to come back for another year? And I know it's early, but what moment stands out to you about your career at Texas? No, I haven't made no decision. I'm um, focused on um, just my guys and what just happened, unfortunately. Um, and it, it was, I mean, I enjoyed every every second of it, every minute of it. Uh, and it, it damn sure didn't end the way I wanted to end. Our next question comes from KXAN. Chris Tavares with KXAN News in Austin. Matt, just what are the emotions going through your head? What are you thinking right now? What are you feeling after that? It just doesn't feel real. Uh, I feel like I'm going to wake up from a bad dream. Next, we'll be going to John High. Uh, John High, Fox 7 here in Austin. Matt, I know it's tough and disappointing, but what did you say to your guys? I mean, what, what were the conversations after the game, or were there any? It uh, wasn't much. Just a lot of guys just... Uh, you could tell we wanted it. Um, had a special group, uh, a special group of guys, and it just our, our big picture, our goal, it just wasn't wasn't accomplished. So, you know, if you don't if you don't accomplish your goal in life, you you don't you don't feel too good. Next up, we'll have Kirk Ray Bulls. 
Yeah, Kirk Balls from the Austin American Statesman. Uh, the turnovers that y'all had tonight, do you have any explanation for those? Because it just seemed like so many weird plays that, you know, you guys usually don't have. Was it just their defense is so active, they sped you up so much? Or what do you think it was for the team? Um, yeah, credit to their defense. A couple bad calls. Um, yeah. Next up, we'll have Robert Cervino. Hi, uh, Robert Trevino here, Texas Student Television. Um, was there anything that Abilene Christian did that surprised you tonight? Or was it anything that just was, uh, did you expect tonight? I mean, you expected that. Um, it's March. They're in the tournament for a reason. Um, you know, I expected to get their best shot. I mean, just playing, playing with a, a just a loose mentality. Uh, and yeah, just the ball didn't fall in our favor today. Next, we'll have Brian Davis. Yeah, Matt, Brian Davis, Austin American Statesman. You touched on it briefly earlier, but were, were you a little surprised at kind of how nervous everybody looked early on? And, and were you trying to get guys to just settle down and, and settle in? Uh, wasn't quite surprised. Like I said last week, you know, it was it was going to happen. Um, and I still think we 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 fought. Uh, we 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 just made too many mistakes, uh, you know, in a make or miss game. So. Our next question will be from Dustin McComas. Matt, I know you you guys probably saw on tape what they do with the hard hedging and things like that on, on defense. Um, you know, why did that? Why do you think that gave you guys some trouble in the half court and just? Also, too, what what was going through your head? You know that final sequence of scramble for for the rebound at the end of the at the end of the game, and they end up calling a foul on you. Um, I mean, it was a loose ball. We both went for it. Um, he got to the ball first, and he threw it up, and they called a foul on me. Um, you know, the ref called a foul, so I guess it was a foul. Um. Next question will be from Cedric Golden. Yeah, Cedric Golden, Austin American States. But Matt, um, you guard yourself, Courtney and Andrew, uh, are the barometer of this team. And um, you guys just didn't take care of the ball like you usually do. Um, how bad is this going to be going into the offseason, knowing that you were playing as good as anyone in the country and came up short tonight? Uh, it hurts. Like I said, it just feel like a bad dream. I'm, I haven't woke up yet. Our next question will be from Bob Bayou. Hey, Matt, Bob Ballou, CBS Awesome Sports. Um, Jericho only had three shots, only got one in the second half. I, I can't imagine if I had told you that before the game started, you would have believed me. How, how do you think that happened? What, I mean, how, how did Jericho not get, not, how did y'all not get Jericho more touches? Um, I don't I have to look at it on tape. It's, it was a rough, it was an ugly game. I don't know. Our next question comes from KXAN Dust. Chris Tavares with KXAN News in Austin. Matt, how would you describe the season as a whole? You, you, you guys hit like a number four ranking, you win the Maui, you win the Big 12 tournament, you guys get that number nine at the end of the regular season, and then this as a whole. How would you guys, how would you describe how this season was for you? Um, it was exciting. Um, we had our highs. We got our lows. Um, I feel like I failed my team for the, expe the expectations that we set and I set for myself and my team. And I feel like I failed it. Our final question comes from John High. John High, Fox 7. Uh, Matt, I know you and Coach Smart are extremely co close. What do you say to those folks that say it's time for him to go? They're not, they're not in the locker room every day. He built a culture here. Um, he can't win a game. He's not on the court. His guys just didn't play up to their, um, their skill set, their, what we know we can play as. It's not on him. 
I felt him. All right. Thank you, Matt, for your time. That's it for this post-game press conference. A transcript of the coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at www.ncaa.com slash transcripts. You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.baritone.com.